Hello, I am Zarkoon, and this is World of Warships Legends. The USS Kansas is a Tier 7 Tech Tree American battleship, the pinnacle of the newly minted USN battleship line. It's kind of an alternative fantasy ship that answers the question of what should the Colorado's successor look like? Should it be a fast, streamlined, sleek speedster like the Iowa? Or should it be a big, hulking, dreadnought-style juggernaut with thick hips, slow speed, and as many 16-inch guns as can reasonably be fit on a hull of this size? Well, if America had decided on the latter battleship build philosophy, the Kansas would have been the result. So let's talk about it. We'll go over my mod selection, commander build, the armor viewer, and then jump into some gameplay where we will talk about the ship stats and how it plays. I'll say before we get started that the Kansas is better than I thought it would be, and I like it much more than I thought I initially would. The Golden Eagle camo, which can be purchased in the supply tab of the store for the low, low price of 750 doubloons, probably helps with that. Anyway, on to the mod selection, which is the first up. As you can see in the first slot, we've got the anti-aircraft mod, damage control in the second, RGA in the third, and... Artillery Plotting Room in the 4th. Now on to the Armor Viewer. Note the yellow armor coating all around this ship. This is 32mm plating, which means a couple of things. First, this battleship can be overmatched everywhere by the Yamato, except at the armor belt. It also means that Cruiser High Explosive from 203mm guns will score damaging penetrations everywhere on this ship, except for the turrets, if they hit those. The same is true of High Explosive from 152mm Cruiser guns, if those guns are being helped out by the Equilibrium of Power skill. So this makes the Kansas extremely vulnerable to HE spam, and its slow speed means you don't want to overextend into an area where HE spamming cruisers can shower you with impunity because you'll never get away and you'll melt very, very fast. Also, because this thing is so thick, and because the shapes and flat surfaces along the side, it seems to sometimes eat relatively chunky AP pens from other battleships even when angled, at least in my experience. On the bright side, the Citadel, though it is massive, sits right at or just beneath the waterline, and it's fairly well protected by a thick armor belt of 343 millimeters. But the bottom line is, keep this ship angled versus enemy battleships and avoid becoming the focus of concentrated HE spam, or you will regret it very, very quickly. As for my commander, Willis Lee is who I've chosen to helm this ship. Megatron and Kondo are his inspirations. I hope this is the commander build I'm actually using in the battle I'm going to show you. Can't remember if it is, but I think this is a good build and the one I'm sticking with. Anyway, as we get into the gameplay portion of this video, we're going to start talking about the ship stats. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that the Kansas has 67,000 hit points at base. And I should say that these are the base stats, influenced only by the mod selection I showed you earlier, and the grade 4 permanent Golden Eagle camo, which, in addition to providing tiny stat bonuses, also has the benefit of being very aesthetically pleasing, at least in my opinion. Anyway, 67,000 hit points, which is kind of middle of the road for battleships at this tier, but much better is the torpedo damage reduction at 40%, which is pretty robust. Only the Alabama and Amagi have better torpedo damage reduction. This thing also has 12 406mm or 16-inch guns in four triple turrets, which gives it the heaviest battleship broadside at the tier. A little bit less impressive is the fact that these guns only reach out to 16.6 kilometers at base, which is pretty short range for the tier, but with the Megatron inspiration, I've extended that range to 17.4 kilometers, which is, you know, slightly better. A lot less good is the 38 second reload on these guns, which is oppressively long. A full 6 seconds longer than the Vladivostok's 33 seconds, which was originally the longest reload at the tier. This thing beats it. 45 seconds for these turrets tra to traverse 180 degrees. 
which ranks at the longest turret traverse time at the tier with several other ships, so it's probably a good idea to buff it with commander skills and with the crisscross skill on Willis Lee. I've got the turret traverse time down to a more manageable 34.6 seconds, which does help. HE Alpha Strike is 5700 with a 36% chance to start a fire. That's exactly the same stats as the high explosive shells on the Iowa's 16 inch guns. The AP has an Alpha Strike of 12,400, which puts it at fourth best at the tier, just behind the Vanguard of all things. But keep in mind that the Kansas has more guns than the Vanguard or any other ship at this tier. So if the Alpha Strike is a little bit lower, then that makes sense. And it is a little bit lower than the Iowa's and Amagi's Alpha Strikes, which reach up into the 13,000 range. But still, more guns than either of those two ships. The AA defense rating of this ship is 95 overall. Long range anti-aircraft guns reach out to six kilometers with my mod, which is a nice long range. And all of the guns have relatively beefy average DPS. So the short, mid, and long range guns all have pretty good DPS. Probably makes it a pretty good AA ship and it probably puts up a fair bit of flak. In fact, when I was streaming on the first day of this update with the Kansas, I believe two Tier 5 aircraft carriers fail divisioned into my game. Don't ask me how it's possible that two of them could have failed divisioned into exactly the same game with tier 6 ships, but they did. And a ranger was attacking my Kansas. I don't think he actually hit me with any of his ordnance. The anti-aircraft guns simply shredded all of his planes and gave me the new anti-aircraft gunner metal, whatever it's called. So, this AA, I have scientifically proven, is extremely effective at killing tier 5 aircraft against tier 7 aircraft probably a little bit less effective but perhaps not a battleship you want to try to drop early on in the game if you're playing an aircraft carrier now the maneuverability characteristics on this ship 25 knot top speed which makes it the slowest at the tier so if you elect to go with William Sims instead of Willis Lee I highly recommend you do not choose the gyrating drill bit skill on Sims, because if you do, you'll make this ship 10% slower, which will put it down to the range of about 21 knot top speed, I think, somewhere in that range, which effectively means it won't really go over 20 knots with all the turning you're going to be doing, so you don't want to make this speed worse. Being that slow at tier 7 is... A problem so you want to keep the 25 knot top speed you might even want to try to buff it by perhaps putting on the epic booster of battle propensity flag which will also extend the range of the guns by just a little bit and that certainly won't hurt but even though the speed is slow the turning circle is phenomenal 700 meters which is 10 meters better than the Alabama which was, I think, originally the king of turning circles for Tier 7 battleships. I believe the 700-meter turning circle on the Kansas makes it best in class in terms of being able to turn. So even though you go very slow, you turn in a very short amount of time, and the rudder shift is only 15.7 seconds, which is pretty excellent for a battleship at this tier. And you can probably make it close to best in class if you choose the steering gears mod in the second slot instead of the damage control mod as I have. But there's a reason I chose damage control and we'll get into that. Last stat to go over is the concealment which is 14.3 kilometer detectability by C. I've got that down to 13.5 kilometers with the condo inspiration. The 14.3 kilometers is the lowest base concealment of any battleship at the tier, and actually it's the same base concealment as the Russian cruiser Chapayev. So buffing it, I think, is beneficial. Actually, I was using Sims with my double concealment inspiration build on this ship, and I had it down to 13 kilometers even. 
Actually, I think I might be using Sims in this game instead of Willis Lee. But I think Willis Lee is probably the better choice. Nevertheless, I guess you're seeing a game with Sims in it. So this is a stealthy battleship, which is good for all the reasons I said. And let's talk about those reasons. The first and foremost reason is the 32 millimeters of armor everywhere. Like I said, that makes this ship uniquely vulnerable to 203 millimeter cruiser high explosive or 152 millimeter cruiser high explosive with the equilibrium of power skill. It means that basically any time one of those cruiser HE shells hits you, it's almost guaranteed to penetrate and do damage, unless it somehow manages to strike the turrets, which is possible, or if it strikes the belt armor. Although the belt armor is covered in 32 millimeters of torpedo protection, so the HE shells are going to penetrate that as well. That means this ship melts very, very fast, and it's got a massive superstructure that is probably the size of some light cruisers in the game. And of course, that superstructure is also very penetratable by high explosive. So that is why I fitted the damage control mod on it. And you can see that shot that I took there from the New Orleans, which I believe was high explosive. You saw all of his shells penetrated and all of them did damage. Imagine you've got something that fires quicker than a New Orleans shooting at you, and you can sort of extrapolate just how fast your hit points will melt away from high explosive spam. There is an Akatsuki behind me, which is a little bit concerning. I'm going to have to turn out of the way, but I don't want to continue giving broadside to this Massachusetts. Instead, I'm going to launch a broadside salvo at him, and it does a fair bit of damage. These guns are pretty chunky, and since there are 12 of them, they can sometimes do really, really amazing things if you get them all to hit. For example, I hit a broadside Georgia in one game, and I scored three citadels. I think I took away all of his hit points except like five to 7,000 hit points. It was almost a devastating strike. And while that doesn't happen extremely often on this ship, I think these guns are nice and punchy. They're certainly very, very good at deleting cruisers if you can get them to land. The only problem is the 38 second reload, which is oppressively long. It makes any salvos you miss hurt quite a bit because you have to wait so long for the guns to be reloaded and then try again. Although, to be fair, I haven't bothered trying to decrease the reload speed on this ship. I certainly don't think you would ever, under any circumstances, want to run the Brawler skill on Willis Lee or any other American battleship commander who might have it. The Brawler skill, of course, decreases the reload time by 10% when fully maxed, but it also decreases the gun range. And because this ship only has a 25 knot speed, it means it can't disengage. Pretty much every ship that you're going to encounter at tier seven, from destroyers all the way up to battleships is faster than this thing. So you don't wanna push in to an area and start brawling with ships, because if you have to disengage, you're never going to be able to. And if there are cruisers shooting at you, like this Katuzov out here, well, anywhere they hit you, they're going to penetrate, they're going to do damage, not to mention the fires they're going to start. And really, I haven't taken any damage throughout the entire course of this game so far from a battleship. The Massachusetts might have shot at me once or twice, but I don't think he did much damage. But you can see I've been reduced to just below half health, and that has everything to do with this Kutuzov and the New Orleans earlier simply shooting me with a high explosive. This ship melts, so I think it's best played at more medium to longer ranges, which is really nice and consistent with the good concealment on this battleship, actually, and a reason that I would recommend actually trying to buff it. If you can play this ship at a longer to more medium range and stay undetected for a while and you can snipe at cruisers and get them off the board 
Then you could possibly move in if there are no HE spamming threats and no torpedo threats and actually brawl with a couple of battleships. And as you can see, these guns are fairly accurate. Now, William Sims, of course, is influencing this particular build or this particular game. He's the commander on this ship. So with Sims, the guns are pretty accurate. Even with Willis Lee, they are not that bad. So this is a much more effective medium to long range ship, I think. That's where the comfort spot is playing it. And with its concealment, if you choose to buff that, it's going to make it a little bit easier to disengage if you start to get focused, which you'll probably want to do because, like I said, this thing will melt very quickly. I think I also mentioned that the surfaces along the side of the ship, some of them are kind of strange and kind of flat. You can see, like, in the center of the ship, there's a part on the side that sort of juts out, and I think this part potentially has the ability to catch shells, even when the ship is angled. You can see, like, right there, just near the secondaries, how the side sort of flares out and comes out at an angle. Well, when you're angled in this ship, surfaces like that are going to catch AP shells, and sometimes you're going to get penetrated, even when you are angled by battleship AP, and it can chunk you pretty good. And I guess that's the downside of being so thick. On the other hand, the ship is pretty maneuverable, which means so long as you are careful, you can potentially dodge torpedoes a little bit easier than other battleships. And if you're in a safe brawling situation, that is 1v1 versus only an enemy battleship with no destroyer threats and no cruiser threats to worry about, then you're going to be more maneuverable and better able to turn than your enemy, which might give you the edge in a close-up brawl. And I suspect that some people are going to try to brawl with this ship because they seem to like to do that in the standard class American Dreadnoughts. All in all, initially when I first saw this ship, I thought it was probably not going to be very good. I thought it was going to be very vulnerable to high explosive, which it absolutely is. And I thought that that was going to make it not so fun to play. But honestly, the guns, they hit really hard. They're very accurate, or they're relatively accurate, and they're very numerous. So that is the redeeming feature on this ship for me. In spite of the slow speed, the guns are pretty good. And frankly, I like this ship a lot. If you're one of those people that really likes the... Dreadnought style American battleships, you know, like the Colorado, the California, that kind of thing. Well, then this ship is sort of like the final form of all of those ships with as many 16 inch guns as possible. And it feels a lot like the spiritual successor to those lower tier tech tree and premium American battleships that are the juggernaut, dreadnought standard types. Only it has 16-inch guns, and it's got a lot of them, and it's at Tier 7, and I don't think it ever actually existed. But it's a pretty good ship. I like it a lot, and if you like the American battleships, I don't think you're not going to like this one. So why not grind to it? And besides, the grind is pleasant, especially when you get to the Tier 6 North Carolina, which is overall fantastic. So I think that's all I have to say about the ship. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like before you go and consider subscribing. I will see you all next time. Goodbye.